Good day, everyone, and thank you very much for giving Atlas Copco this opportunity to contribute to your event. My name is Yuris Terods, and I'm the Business Development Manager for Engineered Solutions in Atlas Copco's Oil Free Air Division. What you're seeing are some of the typical solutions we're providing customers to meet their instrument, utility, and plant air and nitrogen requirements. Perhaps quite different than the rotating equipment you maybe currently have or buying for these applications. For the same non-hydrocarbon, low-pressure utility service, Atlas Copco can also provide adding to the scope of supply, the extra layers of project compliance requested as seen in the examples. Today, I will briefly talk about two topics, Atlas Copco and JIP33 output, the modular platform product, and positive displacement oil-free screw expanders, reducing carbon footprint. So let's get started. So that everyone is quickly up to speed with what I'm talking about when I refer to JIP33, allow me to please play a quick excerpt for you from their shared video. The global demand for energy is rising every year. But the oil and gas industry doesn't have a good history of delivering large capital projects on time and budget. One of the biggest reasons for time and budget overruns is a lack of standardization. Between 2010 and 2014, on average, 75% of large capital projects went over budget by 50%. When buying equipment, each operator takes established industry standards and adds corporate and project specifications on top. This leads to big variations across projects. Suppliers have to customize product designs, which take longer to make. and this may introduce errors that need correcting. This ends up costing more since suppliers have to maintain bigger inventories and since all operators do this, the effect gets multiplied across the industry. Many operators have um, engineering specifications. Um, so this, this, is, this is a shell document for centrifugal pumps. So it's a supplemental document to API 610. It is, I don't know, 65 pages long. BP has one, Total has one, Chevron has one, you know, ENI has one. But, and what's, what's common about them? All different, all completely different. We've all tried to strip out this gold plating, but we're still all buying bespoke suits. One of the things we can do, and certainly people in this room can help us, JIP33 is all, all about, is standardising what we do to drive the supply chain of major projects. What is extremely important in this program that we standardize these, these overlays. Huh? And we have uh, 12 funding uh, organizations sponsoring us. And, but these are very big uh, oil companies, as you all know, global oil companies. And we had more than 150 subject matter experts involved. So that's a huge commitment from the companies that fund the program to, mo to make those people available these standardized specifications sit on top of existing industry standards. They only add the essential minimum of what's needed for safety and operability. But they still allow operators to make some project-specific choices. Suppliers get the same specification of documents every time. This reduces complexity in the supply chain. And the idea is that whatever we produce, that it can be used by each and every company in the sector. And so these will be specifications and that are um, available through the IOGP JIP33 website and can be used by any operator. So if you go to the International Oil and Gas Producers Association website, you can find your way to the JIP33 program site and other information. Or you can simply go to www iogpjip33.org and find the sponsor companies and APCs participating. I also wanted to mention that the video and related graphics uh, regarding JIP33 are all courtesy of the IOGP. So with the current global situation we're in, it's definitely pushing the energy segment towards faster changes. As a company, we were fortunate to participate provide input and feedback to the IOGP's JIP33 team, creating industry-wide utility service compressor and dryer standard. We believe that means we have a story to tell. So therefore, 
I'd like to share our experience that I hope will stimulate some internal discussions with your companies and ideally stimulate some discussions with your equipment suppliers like ourselves. So let's start with our engagement. Atlas Copco was asked to be actively involved in two specific standards, the GIP33 S612 and S613. So what did that mean? Well, first it was to provide our standard comments to the political industry standards. In this case, for the integrally geared centrifugal compressor, the standards considered were API 672 or ISO 10442 and uh, API 614, uh, which is ISO 10438. Once the review of the international standards were completed, we were provided input or we had to provide input on the relative cost impact of the many specific operator requirements that were received the oil company subject matter experts that you heard about. And the output from this exercise then was essentially the draft standard. We were then asked to provide comments to the specification drafts of uh, S612 and S613. And throughout, um, I guess the, the experience to provide continuous te technical support and explanations during uh, any discussions. So for uh, as a vendor, we definitely felt that it was an educational experience. So our main observations, so it's clearly a, a supplementary specification to API 672. So it's essentially another overlay to API 672 fourth edition. There are many modifications, additions, replacements, and luckily for vendors, even some uh, deletions and some relaxation of requirements. But the standard is very simply organized with four main documents. So it's nice that there's a supplementary specification, the data sheets, um, information requirements, essentially definition of uh, the SDRL or VDR, VDRL, depending on the terminology you use for, for documentation, and the quality requirements. So they're essentially the ITP requirements defined. Some interesting modifications uh, to API 672 were also added. So the main shaft anti-friction bearings are now permitted. So API 672 expects uh, hydrodynamic bearings. Uh, the oil reservoir volume reduced to three minute retention versus API 614's uh, specifies three minute working capacity. Table, po uh, table four, sorry, now indicates that cast iron cooler shells are permitted. So API specifies carbon steel only. Um, vendor proven designs for intercoolers and aftercoolers are permitted. So API 614 specifies TMA C with removable channel covers. And then for the data sheets, yeah, the format is also slightly modified. I guess some of the notable additional requirements on top of uh, 672, and what I've done is to the right-hand side, I've added uh, how we as a company are addressing some of these extras. So only one main deviation, and that's regarding the bypass, um, bypassing of safety shutdowns during uh, testing. So as a company policy for safety for our uh, test operators, we take deviation. Uh, to that requirement. So then we had uh, uh, we have some clarifying comments for BOV silencer outlet noise testing requirement and lube oil system flushing. But then uh, we've included as options in our new modular platform solution the requirements for uh, API 671 coupling or ISO 1461 691 sorry coupling, uh, XYZ probes for each impeller radial bearing, skid edge isolation valves for, for water instrument air and drains, and uh, also H-rated solenoids for condensate drain service. So some conclusions we drew from the exercise. Well, again, it's, it's still an API 672 overlay, but at the same time, I guess a very positive point, it definitely reduces the number of overlay variants that we can expect as a vendor. That is if everyone adapts the standard. It contains requirements specific to certain operators that now essentially, I guess, apply to everyone that uses S612. Uh, it does simplify existing API 672 requirements. Uh, for us, uh, as a company, we can definitely utilize our field proven designs with millions of reliable running hours, like for cooler designs and main shaft, main shaft bearings. For certain operators, we still believe that we can simplify the JIP33 requirement through direct scope agreements using the JIP33 standards as a base. Um, so we believe that there's a lot of room that, uh, to save on cost without really giving up safety and reliability. 
I can also appreciate this event. Um, the focus is on routine equipment, yet for anyone involved in designing an instrument and utility air system, downstream treatment really goes hand in hand. Um, an idea that the IOGP's JIP 33, JIP 33 team also considered important, therefore released S612 and S613 together. So the S613 standard is essentially the first industry standard that defines a dryer package. As we know, typically a dryer package has been simply a combination of, of project structural, vessel, instrumentation, control, piping, and packaging specifications kind of lumped together to be followed to define a dryer package. So this is definitely makes it easier to define your downstream treatment require, requirements for a project. And yeah, as the biggest dryer vendor in the world, we naturally have some reservations about the final scope defined. Although we're able to accommodate all the requirements technically, we would definitely encourage discussion with any project team to clarify some of the points that have uh, a bigger commercial impact. So from the experience, um, the takeaways helped us define four main value drivers for utility packages in this segment. First, customers may be looking to simplify in order to reduce cost. However, this doesn't mean compromising on the safety and reliability. End users and EPCs want to partner with a technology leader with proven project experience in order to minimize risk to facilities and personnel. Two, pre-engineering solutions based on proven technologies and project lessons learned carry less risk than unproven or prototype designs. By accepting pre-engineered packages, documents can be available more quickly, equipment lead times can be reduced, and installations can be more cost-effective. Three, end users typically operate across many ge geographical locations, resulting in a wide range of installation environments. EPCs serve a variety of customers, many of which have purchasing agreements for certain commodities. As a result, energy segment customers require vendors that can be flexible and permit changes in scope of supply between projects. Finally, purchasers are looking for ways to leverage production locations from a cost, competence, and geography perspective. Suppliers that can deliver consistent quality from multiple production locations can have the edge over those with limited production flexibility. So based on this, more detailed understanding of the energy segment customer needs. How do we develop a program that creates customer value? Well, first, in order to demonstrate our experience, we provide solutions firmly based on our leadership in compression and air treatment core technologies, combined with our extensive experience gained from delivering hundreds of energy segment projects. Two, we create a set of robust specifications, which include requirements based on international and industry standards, that incorporate lessons learned from delivered projects. From these specifications, we fully develop designs in order to increase bidding accuracy and reduce contract execution time. Three, we adopt a design philosophy to meet 80% of typical project needs while ensuring a reasonable level of flexibility. By developing a set of modular architectures, we ensure enough scalability to efficiently adjust scope of supply or substitute critical components to meet project specifications requirements. And finally, we ensure that these designs can be built across our product company network in order to leverage our local competence and produce solutions closer to our customers. By maintaining one set of design, uh, we improve production efficiency while delivering the same high quality from all locations. Based on these four pillars, we created the modular platform program. And this program delivers a set of solutions for utility air, instrument air, and nitrogen applications in the energy segment. Each product is based on our core technologies, combined with a set of engineered features that comply with international and industry standards. The packages are designed to resist the temperature extremes, wind load, dust, and corrosives present in typical project locations. Additionally, a series of options are offered to adapt the most challenging requirements. By taking a pre-engineered and flexible approach, we present a set of heavy duty, fit for purpose solutions that may be adapted to project specific needs with little or no redesign. These modular platforms allow us to extend 
what could be considered a dual offer strategy by considering a second platform on which we may base solutions for more, more complex projects. In presenting two platforms, our sales teams can improve the match between our customers' needs and our recommended solutions. By doing so, we reduce our chances of overspecifying, and more importantly, really is meeting your expectations. The first phase of the modular platform program delivers air compressors for plant air and air dryers for instrument air applications designed specifically for the needs of the energy segment. Let's take a closer look now at our first releases. For medium flow utility air applications, we have air-cooled, oil-free screw compressors. This design includes the same proven compressor stages, gearbox, and coolers that are standard production air-cooled, oil-free screw range, combined with a series of engineered features. Each package is suitable for outdoor installation with increased resistance to wind load, dust, and corrosion over our typical manufacturer standard. In order to meet project requests, the platform accommodates very flexible range of all types of drives. For controls and instrumentation, well, in the base scope, in the base scope, sorry, it includes Atlas Copco's proven controllers paired with transmitters for temperature, pressure, and level measurements. The complete package is built on a structural steel skid with four-point lifting for ease of transport and positioning on site. Oh, hold on, Uris. You just described an oil-free screw solution. What happened about what Atlas Copco have for centrifugal JIP S612? Mm, good question. Well, um, what we see typically are requests for medium flow instrument utility air requirements. And uh, we know that positive displacement crew fit, screw fits very well to meet customer needs for those applications. So although the present, at the present time, JIP33 team has not considered a standard for positive displacement screw compressors, we've used the same logic and lessons learned. And essentially, considered API 6, uh, 619 or ISO 10440 as the industry standard to start from. Plus the operator inputs during the discussions on the turbo and the dryer standard development for essentially the, def the definition and input to our modular air-cooled screw compressor. Okay, so for those of you maybe that are not, aren't familiar with the API 619 ISO 10440 um, standard for utility air service, let me just quickly clarify a couple of small yet very important points. Um, it's the industry's reference essentially for standard for positive displacement crew technology. Um, the current fifth edition is co-branded with ISO 10440 standard, as you can see. And for the uh, non-process or for non-process non-hydrocarbon utility service for instrument air compressors, ISO 10440's part two essentially should be considered as described in ISO 10440 part one preamble. And as you can see also um, from the scope description summary. So anyways, getting back to the integrally geared S612 solution, uh, this would be for, again, like a higher flow airflow applications. And this design includes the same proven compressor core and coolers as our standard production integrally geared machines, but with again, segment specific engineered features. The oil system has been designed specifically for high compliance to the API 614 and the JIP 33 standard. Um, if required, project specific drive motors and API specific drive couplings can be easily accommodated. Control systems and vibration monitoring may be built on the skid or connected to the package via junction box. And each package is built on a full length structural steel skid frame and drip tray suitable for four point. So let's move on to the second topic, converting pressure to electricity. Using positive displacement screw technology as expanders to generate electricity from pressure letdown networks. <clears throat> Excuse me. I guess we know that by compressing a gas, we create stored energy that can be used downstream to do some type of useful work or operation. We also know that big compressed air or gas in the lifetime of the equipment is the electricity to drive the motor that drives the compression cores that compresses the air. So anyways, in other words, compressed gas contains a lot of stored energy, right? 
To help reach a carbon neutral economy, Atlas Copco has already made big strides with increased efficiency and energy recovery solutions, but we need to do more. There are plenty of other areas where we can save energy and introduce carbon reduction technologies. Pressured electricity is one of them. And as you can see in the graphic, it can potentially bring a lot of savings. And why are we doing this? Well, I think that quickly becomes pretty clear. It's a win for you, it's a win for us, and most importantly, it's a win for the environment. Some of you may not be aware, but we own all the main compression technologies in-house. So as the design and manufacture of all these cores, over time, we have and keep spending millions of dollars on research and development. So our competence in these technologies is part of what makes us unique as a supplier. And yeah, I guess we hope this keeps us ahead of our competition. Within each technology, we drive innovation forward and set new standards along the way. Essentially, you can say that innovation is part of Atlas Copco DNA. So let's start with our core technologies. We have millions of hours of experience on compressor packages driven by electric motors, typically focused on the compression of inert gases for utility services. When I say this, I'm not considering our gas and process division colleagues since process gas applications are really their specialty. Compression deals you know, with the inlet pressure being lower than the outlet pressure. During compression, the temperature of the gas rises and to manage the heat load, it's typically dissipated through an aftercooler. Our energy recovery solutions can recover much of the heat generated, yet, okay, that's a subject for a, a separate webinar. Let's now take the same core and we'll say flip it around. It means we take the inlet pressure higher than the outlet pressure. We replace the electric motor with a generator. We can now expand a gas over the screw element that turns a generator to generate electricity. As we are the core technology owners, we can also tweak our core designs to gases compatible to the casing materials. So this is basic information. I simply want to be clear. So when you compress a gas, the outlet flow is hot. When you expand a gas, the outlet flow is cold. The gas you expand is dry. Not only are you able to produce electricity through, again, turning the generator, but you can also use the cold produced, which can be used directly or indirectly for cooling, air conditioning, that type of application. So for example, if uh, you preheat natural gas to say 40 degrees C, after expansion, it's cooled down to minus 20 degrees C. So yeah, in the case the customer can't use uh, cold from the expansion, as in majority of the cases today, and requires downstream or normal temperature at the outlet of the expander, well, then a preheating source is needed to increase the inlet temperature of the gas so that the downstream network is operating, we'll say, at a more median temperature. And yeah, that essentially also eliminates the risk for any downstream hydrate crystalline formation in the case that we're still talking about natural gas. So for some of you, this may not be new, yet for, say, utility compressed air and gas person like myself for years, this simple, cha simple change of perspective was never really considered. But expanders are actually not uh, anything new within the Atlas Copco portfolio. We've gained much experience with the company over the years. So the first expander is designed by Lindy in 1936. Um, in 1976, Lindy was already generating electricity from pressure let down applications. And when Atlas Copco's gas and process division was created from Lindy in 1984, uh, this solution remained, actually was developed and grew further. And so historically, turbo expanders were considered the most effective solution for pressure letdown. And for many, that's probably still the case. But what has significantly changed today is that with the increased cost of electricity and the low price of natural gas, generating electricity from a gas network that needs to be regulated from a higher to a lower pressure becomes more feasible, especially if, in your case, uh, you have a lower pressure and lower flows than many of the main natural gas grids. And that is where I guess the oil-free screw expander comes in. Just to explain a little bit more, uh, I guess the most common pressure letdown network is. So essentially, I'm talking about the millions of kilometers of natural gas pipelines across the world that are taking high pressure natural gas from a high pressure source and regulating that down to pressures usable 
you know, for industries and consumers. When you look at, I guess, the gas pipelines more closely, you quickly see that the, they integrate multiple regulating meter stations throughout. More importantly for big gas users, many of these pressure regulating and metering stations are actually right at your facility. Here again, historically pressure letdown. Um, I guess it's easy to look at the application with high flow, high pressure difference. But as you can see, or as, as, as you uh, may know, generating electricity through expansion, the pressure ratio is actually more critical in the calculation than the pressure difference. So in the summary table, one can quickly see that there is an interesting amount of energy that can be produced at what is essentially a very small pressure difference, yet a significant pressure ratio. So for those with gas network regulation on site, uh, encourage a closer look. So as mentioned earlier, expanders are not new. Turbo technology has been, we'll say, the most developed as the main focus, and mainly due to the high flows and pressures versus the screw expander. For customers looking for new ways to recover energy, the screw expander offers some significant benefits that I would like to highlight in the next two slides. <clears throat> I will highlight the items more applicable on the screws, screws so on the, uh, the right-hand side. It's considered volumetric type expander versus dynamic. So the pressure ratio independent of R RPM and the screw elements are actually designed for a large operating window. Uh, benefit wise, yeah, we're looking at a one design fits all type of approach and the efficiency stays quite high over a large operating window. Of course, okay, there are some limitations. So uh, high pressure ratio per stage um, and high pressure in general is high bearing forces. So there is a limitation to the higher inlet pressures. And yeah, I, I guess we'd like to say the screw expander offers flexibility, scalability, and can efficiently um, be a, a good solution, especially at, at lower flows and inlet pressures. So to summarize, and some good reasons why we're expanding the usage of our oil-free screw stages is, I guess one, it's a single design fits many. So it's a good fit for large pressures um, and temperature ranges. So it covers a, a wide range. Um, if an installation wants flexibility and some redundancy, extra screws, expanders can easily be installed in parallel to accommodate more flow. This is because again, the packages are essentially small in size, simple in installation and uh, uh, um, easy to, to move from A to B. It's a modular approach. Um, so yeah, it, it, it offers uh, this idea of balancing hours as well on your mechanical equipment. Um, efficient and simple maintenance. Again, spares are common across uh, the multiple units. Um, but more importantly, the service organization within Atlas Copco is uh, familiar with the types of parts that we're using. And continuous power production during maintenance. Again, with a, multi with a parallel multiple unit installation, you can take down one unit for maintenance while still generating electricity with the others. Regulating stations typically look very similar. Uh, the, they have preheating or they're actually preheating the gas before it's expanded through the pressure reducing valve to step down the gas pressure to meet downstream user requirements. So a basic expander is able to simply take a percentage of that flow, expand it, and feed the lower pressure back to the network. That's what Atlas Copco offers as a base solution. So the expander, or as I said, our screw compressor flipped around, plus generator, plus basic controls. Depending on the inlet temperature, flow and pressure of high pressure gas, Atlas Copco is also able to include in its expanded package, a preheating option. Typically, any PLD is all, uh, already tied to some cost of preheating the gas, like I said before. Uh, it's important to know that there are options to the type of preheating. And for some of you listening, you have uh, already waste heat available at your facility that helps lower the overall carbon footprint. And for fil fil facilities in the Middle East, uh, as mentioned before, using the available cooling also helps lower your carbon footprint. At uh, the event last year, some of you may have seen Atlas Copco's presentation introducing our new VSD Plus, so variable speed drive plus oil-free compressors. Well, one year later, we're now using this unique hermetically sealed permanent magnet motor design and tweaked it as our expander generator and our new oil-free screw elements as our expander elements. 
Let me show you how simple it is to build up a base scope screw expander. Essentially for the expander, like I mentioned, we use our proven oil-free elements. For the generator, we're using our in-house hermetically sealed oil-cooled permanent magnet motor. Of course, compared to the existing compressor design, we've redesigned the gearbox and interconnections to accommodate some of the specific design requirements for the expander. We've, uh, I guess, initially created an element combination matrix that depending on the inlet pressures and temperatures, we can adjust for the nominal produced uh, electrical horsepower. So our screw expander is simple. We're using field proven components and technology that will be familiar with our service organization around the world, ensuring maximum electricity output that will contribute to the safe and sustainable reduction in your carbon footprint. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention and remember.